Hi, everybody. I'm Gwendolyn Stork of Stork Family Law, and our April 2021 Hero of the Month is Lincoln Way Special Recreation Association. And we're honored and privileged today to have two representatives, Keith Wallace and Melissa Jensen from the organization, to give us a little background to tell us what great services they provide. So, Keith, can you tell us a little bit, first of all, what you do at uh, Lincoln Way and then also the history of the organization? All right, so uh, Lincoln Way Special Recreation Association was uh, founded in 1976. So we've been around for a while. Uh, a lot of people um, consider us a hidden gem uh, because a lot of people don't know about us until they need the service or they have a child with a disability or a child or an adult acquires a disability later on in life. And then they're looking for some activities and we have them. So we um, meet a lot of people during their journey in life and um, we provide recreational services for individuals with disabilities. So um, our, our, our vision is to, um, um, to break down the barriers uh, for individuals with disabilities. So um, we build a community without limits. So that is kind of what we do. We're a family here. We love uh, all of our participants as they're our own. Um, we provide phenomenal programs, but we're an extension of the park districts. So, okay. um, so we cover seven park districts. There's 30, 31 SRAs in the state of Illinois. And um, each one of them are extension of a park district if they levy the funds to become um, and become a part of an SRA. So it takes two park districts or two municipalities to become a uh, SRA. So you can't do one part district and one municipality. It has to have two of each to create an SRA. And then that's how we form. So each part district levies funds. So um, wherever you're from, if you look at your tax bill, it'll say handicap fund. And that would be the part district's portion of um, levying those funds from property taxes to give to us. We get two cents. The part district gets two cents to help um, make their uh, parks accessible, their playgrounds accessible, their buildings, their facilities, and then we get two cents for operational things. So it's pretty, pretty cool um, um, partnership. Um, our districts that cover us are Frankfurt, Mokina, New Lenox, Piatone, uh, Manhattan, uh, and Frankfurt Square, and Wilmington. So those a are the long, a broad area. Yes, it is. Uh, those are the seven. We okay. also have uh, cooperative agreements with uh, Homer, and um, Monique. Okay. Um, so we have cooperative agreements. They're not full members, but they get some of the things because they'll they'll actually pay their out of district road, uh, out of district portion of programming for us. We do um, we do charge for our services. Uh, okay. That's what we do. We typical park district, but our goal is not to make a profit; is to break even. Um, and we do have um, um, financial assistance for those who can't afford programs. So I'll kick it over to Melissa and she can talk about some of the programs that we have that we, we have at LWSRA. Sure. Hi, Melissa. Hi. Hi, everybody. We have a lot of program um, offerings here at LWSRA. Uh, we start as young as three years old, we say, and I know we've taken a few younger than that if they're getting close. Um, I know in the future, we also want to start some mommy and me classes too, so we can really reach out to all ages of individuals with disabilities. But we have an adult day program. We have an after school program for individuals that are any in school still, so four to 21 years old. Um, they can come to our facility after school. Uh, the bus would actually provide that transportation. So it's very nice for the parent to extend that day. Uh, we have youth programming. Uh, our, one of our really popular youth programs is our drama club. Uh, we have over usually anywhere between 30 to 40 youth participants in that program. We also have a Saturday Fun Club program that serves ages three to 21 as well, and that is pretty popular. Uh, we have a summer camp, so we will be running summer camp this year. It will be starting June 7th and going through the end of July. I know a lot of parents have been asking, so we will be running camp. Uh, we have Special Olympics programming here that is for the cognitive side and then we also have adaptive sports and that is for individuals that have physical um, disabilities so we have both we serve both areas which is really great and I think that sets us apart um, from a lot of other agencies we also provide inclusion services uh, this is one of the passions of me um, I love inclusion and I love um, setting or getting the child or adult 
um, to be successful. So what that is, is that they would sign up for a regular park district program in one of those seven park districts that Keith described. Um, and then we would provide either an aid or some training to that regular park district so that that individual could be successful um, with their like peers. So that is pretty cool. And I think that's kind of also a hidden gem, like sure. Keith says, not a lot of people know about that service. Um, but I do believe it's getting more and more popular the more we get the word out. And, and the so, other thing, we, oh, go ahead. go ahead, Gwen. I just wanted to know, you know, who can access it? We keep talking about all these communities and you're talking about all the programs. So is it, do you have to be a resident of those communities in order to access the programs? That was my question. Technically, no. So we do have resident rates and we have non-resident rates. Okay. okay, so technically anybody can come to our programs. Of course, that we want to serve our residents first. Um, but that does not say that you can't come if you're a, a Tinley resident or a Joliet resident. Um, I know for the adaptive sport programs too, uh, there's a cooperative and there is only resident rate. So there is no non-resident rate for those programs just yeah. because it's a, a low incidence population. Um, and there's not a lot of places around that have those programs. So that is one in particular that has no um, non-resident rates. And um, also, Gwendolyn, there's uh, there's a we get for our residents, we give a priority registration. So they get the registration of probably a week before or a couple of days before um, it opens up to everybody else. Understood. Right. Can you tell us a little bit about how the community can support you? Because obviously it takes a village in the sense of, you know, you've got a lot of good community support. You've got seven villages and we yeah. talked about park districts and the village mix, but obviously you need some help from the community too. So tell us a little bit about that, Keith. Yeah, so um, the, the bottom line is really knowing who we are and keeping, you know, like remembering our name and remembering we're here. Um, those are things because every SRA struggles with getting their message out there of the good work that we're doing. And every SRA is doing phenomenal work and they hire phenomenal staff to provide programs for people with disabilities. Um, it's just really getting people to be on the forefront that we're doing things. So the community can get involved, how, you know, uh, they can you know, send, send their child to have a volunteer experience here. Um, you know, then, you know, they are, their eyes are open to all the good things that we're doing. Right. Um, ask the right questions. We do PE takeovers where we go into the PE classes and we, we take over and show the individual, the kids with disability, show the kids that sports for people with disabilities exist out there and they can play at a high level. And for them remembering that, and then if they have a child with a disability, um, you know, then they will know that this exists later on in life. So it's just really being on the forefront of people's mind and knowing sure. we, we are here, we, this is what we do. Um, there's, there, like I said, there's 31 of us. Um, we cover pretty much every park district in the state of Illinois, but yet we're still a hidden gem. But when you find us, you see our hearts, you see our mind, you see everybody that pour love into this field and they're, and, and they're not getting paid a lot of money to do it, but they enjoy what they do. And that, that's really what um, sets us a part of any industry because every SRA I've been a part of that I've seen, they pour their love into the kids and into their jobs where sometimes you, well, they, you gotta go home, you gotta go home. I know you wanna do it, but you gotta go home. So that's kind of, um, that's kind of on a, a aspect of the community involvement, just really coming out to our events, supporting our events, knowing who we are, sharing the word. If you know somebody with a disability, say, have you heard of this SRA? Or right. where do you live? Do you know about this SRA? Um, and they're like, what's SRA? And then you being able to, to be able to tell them that, you know, it's a place that does recreation for people with disabilities and they have all ages, you know, and, and it starts there. You know, so that's kind of how we that's the that's the help we need out there from people, um, because we know there's more people. Um, I think in New Linux, we serve about 62 participants. But if one if one in every 10 households know somebody or has somebody with a disability, we're missing probably okay, right? we're missing a lot of people that just don't know about us or are scared to come through the door. So that's our goal. That's our mission is to try to find the people and provide the service but we got to go through different avenues to um, get that. And that's, you know, doing things like this. Um, and hopefully somebody, if we, you know, like I always tell Melissa, we do a lot of community events and we, you know, that we don't have to, but if we get that one person that didn't know about us, 
worth and it's a win. It, it makes it all worth the money we spent. It makes it all worth the hours we did because we changed one life. And that's why we do a lot of the community events that we do. Well, Melissa, turning back to you, I know that there's such an item as a universal design park. First, what the world is that? And tell us what Lincoln Way is doing with regard to that. Well, it's pretty exciting for us because we we have a beautiful park that was just put in. Um, it actually is a park from New Lenox Park District, and we get to we're just so honored to have it right here next to our facility. So we did help raise money for that that park, um, but New Lenox got a grant from the government and they also put in money for it too. So we can't say that it's all us, uh, but Keith had a lot of input on the design and everything. And it's for everybody. It's for the grandparents that want to play with their grandchildren. It's for the wheelchair users. It's for the everyday kids. So um, that's why it's universal design. Um, it's because it's honestly for everybody. So it has ramps going up into the playground. So there's no stairs. Um, it's a open design, Keith, what else? We got yeah. a good playground equipment yeah. too. Yeah. So, so if you, and Melissa touched on this a little bit, um, it's, you know, yes, it's good for individuals with disabilities, but think about the aging population that, you know, a lot of people are going into scooters and walkers and things. Right. And if they're trying to take their grandchild to a park, it's not really accessible. If, you know, if they stay in the mulch, that's where they're going to be. You know, I'm not leaving. It's going to be hard to get that kid out. Um, with a, uh, a typically developing child. So, you know, now this is a park that, you know, grandma in her walker, in her, in her power chair has a surface that she can go and access some of the equipment with her grandchild or, or their, you know, I keep saying her, but it could be a grandpa, you know, it could be, it, but it, 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 it makes it universal for everybody. And that is something that we took in consideration when we were, uh, you know, designing the park uh, with the park district, because we, we, we can't do it without them. We only raised 200,000. The part, the, the whole playground is about a million dollar uh, um, facility. So, um, and it's a, it's great. We got the money from the state, which is awesome. They got, uh, we got 20, we got a 20, they got a $25,000 grant. We put in 200,000, uh, yeah, 200, $250,000 grant they got. We put in 200,000 for the playground equipment. And then the park district really matched the rest to make it. Wow. Yeah. So you think about it, that um, that that money that the state gave actually was, uh, you know, we tripled that in just amount of services that we were able to provide out there and which is phenomenal. But it is great. Um, people are tagging us all the time. So if you come to the park, you're watching this, please tag LWSRA so we can see you were here. And uh, we do look at it. We had somebody today. Um, I think we found somebody the other day that had a disability that we did not know who they were. Mm -hmm. And we look at it and we will try to track you down and try to, you know, get you participating in more than just the park. Absolutely. And I have to tell you, I want to give a compliment out to the Rec Association because I went there for a program we did with Building Hope for the Future. It's a program that our firm sponsored. It was a few years ago to give an educational program really to parents and really the community at large. And we used the facilities and one, they were clean, two, they were beautiful, but three, they were friendly. Yes. I have to tell you, my husband and I got in the car that night and they're like, both of us looked at each other. We had a lot of fun and everybody was so nice. You know, how many times in today's society do you get that? So I really want to give kudos to you, your staff and everybody that was there. It seemed like a real open, fun place to be, a place I wanted to go back to for anything in the future. So, you know, I just invite anybody listening today to say, you know, this is a comfortable place. There's nothing here to worry about. You go, you find out what's available program, what fits for you. Not everything fits for everybody and that's okay, but certainly knowing about it, identifying it and understanding the community resource that you have is just incredible. So anything else you'd like to add today, Keith, about what uh, you do and what's coming up for events? Yeah, I'd like to thank you for coming and saying it's uh, uh, fun and all that. But one thing I want to admit, we treat everybody as their family when they walk through the door. Yep. And that that is very important for us. So when you come through here, um, you know, you're going to be treated like family. We're going to take the attention um, to make sure that you are served and you have a great experience here. And that, that's that been something we've been doing forever. And that kind of sets us apart from a lot of other places. Yes, we do. We do have a lot of things coming up. We um, we just kicked off a campaign called Hawk Effect. Um, you mentioned our building, how clean it is. Um, we did get a grant for that a long time ago, and um, we're, we're still paying that off. 
we we're paying that building off. So we're we asked some of our parents to really uh, think about, you know, when they're raising money this year to try to help us uh, reduce those costs so we can provide some of the other things that we have to do here, like inclusion and and um, build for the future and, you know, make some improvements and capital improvements. So we have about two hundred and seventy five thousand dollars left. And we're looking for we look we ask 400 parents or community supporters to help us with uh, raising five hundred dollars each. So that's it. And if we get 400 people, then we can put that in and then our payments will be a lot easier to pay when it comes around, sure. which it always comes around. So um, that's one thing we're doing. We have some community people that are doing uh, fundraisers for us. Okay. Uh, I think uh, the wine thief is having a, a wine um, a wine event on May 16th, I believe. Am I right? Am I right? Yes. Yes. May 16th. I believe they're having a, uh, at CDME, they're selling tickets for that. They're giving us a portion of the supply uh, funds for that. Um, we also have a individual from uh, a massage therapist, I get body, body something. I, I can't think of the name right now. Melissa's looking for it. But um, they're doing uh, special needs donations. They're doing special needs massages and they're taking donations for us for individuals with special needs. They're you know blocking off time where you can come in and get a massage for your child at a reduced rate um, and they're doing that for us and they're taking donations. So um, those are some of the things that we have going on. If you're out there and you wanna volunteer, please email Melissa Jensen at lwsra.org. Um, once again, Melissa Jensen at lwsra.org. She will get you plugged in. We're always looking for volunteers. We're about to kick up our programs again. Um, I'm trying to think of anything else. Do we have anything else? The name of the massage place is Body Fountain. Uh, I was close. Okay. And then our last thing is our, uh, our, our foundation's golf outing will be coming up in August and we'll be sending out the, uh, the save the date and for that. So if you got any golfers listening, our golf outing is one of the best in town. You know, um, it's in August, the second Friday in August. So make sure you come out, you see that, please join it. all the money that's raised goes towards uh, great things. The foundation does a great job for us and um, does our pro, I mean, it goes for programming, capital equipment, our buses, maintenance, everything. So, it, you know, it's a lot that keeps this place running. So um, our foundation does a really good job. So. Um, and that's our golf outing. And it's, it's really good. We, we, we usually sell out pre COVID. Um, so there won't be a, there won't be a meal or anything. Cause we don't know how to figure that all out, but we do a lot of prizes and things like that. So you'll get a chance. Sure. You'll go home. You'll go home with some baskets. We have a lot of baskets. So, you know, and I know doing family law that a lot of parents who have, you know, children who are disabled to any extent, you know, they have a hard time sometimes reaching out and taking that first step. So if you're listening today, you know, I think that what you need to know is that there is help out there and there's people who can assist you. And this organization in and of itself can provide so much for you, you know, and understanding what you need to do, what your responsibilities are, but how that there really is a service out there and it's fun and it's family, right? I, you know, that's the one memory I have. So if you're listening today, you know, whether you have someone in your home or not, all of us have an association with someone who's disabled and that's getting the word out, sharing it. And, you know, it's like a hidden gem when you're driving there, you know, from my experience driving, and then you look at the facility, it's just, it opens your eyes to so much that's out there. So we appreciate everything that you do, because I have to say that I find this organization to be truly genuine in what you do and how you service people. So thanks for everything you give back to our community. And we hope that people will reach out to you. And we certainly, if you have any questions, you can contact our firm. We do the services for people going through a divorce with disabilities, with estate planning. And then you're in our resource center because we wanna make this known. It is the hidden gem in the community. So thank you so much for what you do. Anything else you wanna to add today? No, thank you. All right. Well, nice to see both of you and we'll be in touch. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.